Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be starting a new series um, all about the curriculum we have been using, which is the good and the beautiful. I am going to try to just explain how we're using it, um, the things that we are enjoying, and how it is fitting in best for us. Um, so I thought I would just go ahead and make this a series so that I didn't have one super duper long video. Um, I'm just going to go through each of the actual curriculum that I have. So I'm thinking this is going to be about six or seven videos. Starting with this one, which is going to be just a general Q&A. Um, some of the most frequently asked questions I get when it concerns the good and the beautiful and how it is working in our homeschool. So if you guys have been around for any amount of time, then you know that we build our own curriculum. This is going to be our sixth year of homeschooling. And um, up until now, we just, well, not really up until now because we are still using it. But I do build my own curriculum based on the individual interest and strengths of each of my children. And I have a video on how I build that curriculum. We are still working through that very same curriculum, you guys. Um, but The Good and the Beautiful has been an amazing addition, more as an extremely heavy resource for us, um, rather than the course of study, if that makes any sense. If you haven't seen that video of how I build our curriculum, I will make sure to link it above and in the description box below for you to check that out. So we are still using that as a guide, but I am definitely, over the last year, I have been slowly incorporating the good and the beautiful to make sure that it works for us. Um, I'm very hands-on with how I build our studies for each of our children so just opening up one specific curriculum and just going with it is just not for me okay so I have my questions here so I don't get way too rambly because this is just supposed to be a Q&A video guys so you know I can get rambly anyway so um, my first question is are we still using it yes we absolutely are still using it um, it has taken quite a bit of time for me to get around to talking more in depth about how we are using the curriculum because it has been a slow integration, I guess you would call it. Um, nothing was really wrong with the way that I was doing things before we found The Good and the Beautiful. Um, if you watch that other video, you'll see that I actually stumbled upon it looking for a history curriculum um, to help me out because history is probably my least favorite subject um, to attempt to teach my children. So I needed a little bit more help in that area and that was where I found The Good and the Beautiful to begin with. From finding that specific curriculum, I became very interested in the rest of what they had to offer. Um, I ended up reaching out to Jenny at The Good and the Beautiful and she actually sent over curriculum I was interested in for me to try, which I am super grateful for and cannot thank her enough. Um, in the meantime, I did still have to make sure that I was being completely authentic to the way we do homeschool and what our actual needs were. And it was a challenge because obviously you're grateful for what you've been given and you I've been asked over and over again how we're liking it and um, people are so anxious for my reviews and my thoughts on the curriculum. But I really had to give myself time um, to let it just kind of naturally integrate with the way we were currently doing school because like I said nothing was wrong with what we were doing now there were gaps and holes that I was interested in filling and it turns out that this curriculum absolutely filled um, those things those little gaps um, that I had and I'm just I'm going to talk more about what they were and um, and how the good and the beautiful filled those up but I'm trying to get to my questions <laughs> So, um, yes, the first question was, are we still using it? Absolutely. And as time has gone on, we have integrated more and more of it um, into our natural course of study or our curriculum that we had set out um, a little bit ago. Uh, my next question was, why has it taken me so long to review, which I just answered. Um, basically because I just wanted to be very authentic about the way that it was actually working out 
in our homeschool? Where to begin? I get this question quite a bit. So one thing that the Good and the Beautiful has done is made it extremely easy to start. If you go to their website, um, there is a section for assessments. I am going to talk more about um, the individual pieces of curriculum and why I love them. But the biggest thing is that one of the biggest challenges I had in trying to decide, you know, each course of study for each individual child was trying to figure out their grade. <laughs> like, that was like the struggle, okay? We, we had gone along for many years since beginning homeschool, just naturally learning, you know, just it was just not a matter of what did I need to teach them. We just went full force ahead. I didn't have any issues with that. Once I started to get closer to first grade, second grade, that type of deal, I started to have that question, well, what should I be teaching them now? And the challenge was in trying to match a grade level with what their actual level of knowledge was, if that makes any sense. That was so hard for me and one of the reasons why it was so hard is you know your kids have strengths and weaknesses and they might be advanced in math but not so advanced in language arts um, or spelling or something like that so it was really hard we did try one other curriculum in the past that ended up failing horribly for me. I'm not going to mention what that curriculum was just because it might work for someone else but for us it did not and the main reason it doesn't didn't did not work is because as far as curriculum goes you generally have to choose a grade level and I purchased a first grade curriculum um, for my oldest son at the time and I really had a hard time with that because there were some areas that he was far more advanced and then some areas that he really needed to be um, moved back a bit and I found that really really challenging I was having a hard time wrapping my mind around that I was also having a hard time because I had spent say five six hundred dollars for this um, curriculum based on that grade level and I couldn't use it again really. I mean maybe I could adapt certain parts of it but it just wasn't working for me. And I think that the biggest thing that um, The Good and the Beautiful does for me is it's separated into levels. And because it is so um, cost effective and because of the way that they have structured the curriculum um, separating the subjects and the levels and things like that. It made it extremely easy for me to figure out what was going to fit um, best for my kids. Uh, one of the major issues that I had in finding a grade level was mainly started with my um, middle son who at the time when I was trying to look for curriculum was actually, I guess if he was in public school he would have been in kindergarten but he was most certainly working on um, a level that was well into a level that was well into the second and third grade materials so there was my challenge I needed material for him um, that was going to challenge him but still in a way that met this still kindergartner you know and I had a really hard time with that you guys so um, I'm going to talk more about in becoming videos about how I made that work and how the good and the beautiful made is so much easier for me to make that work in our homeschool so as far as where do you begin they have a section for assessments where you can go through and they will give you instructions on after you have um, administer that assessment to your child what their best practices are for choosing a level the wonderful thing about the good and the beautiful is that their language arts level I believe it is um, level one to level five is free for you to download which is incredible and it's incredible because you get an opportunity to download the whole of their curriculum to get an extremely thorough view of how they build curriculum 
and how it might fit in what would work for you and what may not work for you. But not only that, the fact that they offer from level one to level five means that you can try out the different levels. So you may see that if your child tests into level three, you can you can begin with level three, but you can also go back to level two and you can also move up to um, level four, which has been an extreme benefit for me, and I'll explain why in future videos. But you basically start there. You start with their assessments and then just take a look at their recommendations for which level to start on. I know it is natural. It's just your, I don't know, for me, it was your natural tendency to move them up a level. So if they're just on the borderline, um, and <laughs> say they're going into the third grade, and you're testing them in that area, and they're on the borderline between the second level and the third level, your natural tendency is to want them to just, you know, move on to the third level. But with the good and the beautiful, it really does not go by grades. It is perfectly fine for you to begin um, at the second level and then move up to the third. If anything, it would be a nice refresher for them to be able to breeze um, through that second level before they move on to the third level. I also really love the way that they have organized um, their curriculum, which makes it super easy for you to not feel like you have to stick to the plan even though it's suggested and it's good that you stick to the plan. We skip around all the time and I'm gonna kinda explain why in future videos, but it works for us, but you don't have to do it at the same time. And it just really provides an option for, um, you know, many different situations that you would find yourself in in homeschool. And I really like that a lot. So that is where you start. You start with their assessments and you just take a look at their recommendations and go from there. I get this question quite a bit, how is it for a faith-based curriculum? So I'm not going to go too deep into this because um, my, my initial answer is I think it's amazing. Um, I haven't found anything so far that I um, am unhappy with. However, I'm also not looking for things to be unhappy with. And I say that because I think sometimes we can be overly critical, especially when it comes to curriculum. Now, let me also say that it does not bother me um, if I have a science curriculum that mentions evolution, you know, and I know that for some people that's like a major, major no-no. That doesn't bother me. I feel like it is my responsibility as their teacher to be able to help them to address um, truth and untruth. Um, and for us, that just gives me an opportunity to challenge uh, what we believe and become more rooted in what we do believe. So it doesn't bother me when I see things like that. I don't need to, um, I don't ever feel the need to shield them from that idea. I feel like it's an opportunity to teach them, you know, what scientists do believe and then we can talk about why um, we believe that that couldn't possibly have been true. Um, as far as evolution is concerned. So that doesn't bother me, and I, and I say that to just kind of give you um, an understanding of whom you're listening to, because it may bother you, and if it does bother you, then that, you know, is a game changer for you. So I think that is interesting with faith-based curriculum. I don't look for it to be exactly what I believe all the time, so I'm not always trying to pinpoint or point out those things. That's just not me. But if it is you, then I'm probably not the best one to give you um, my thoughts on the curriculum. And sorry if you hear people passing in the background. That's just what it is. Okay, this is a big one that I get quite often. Um, I heard, I heard it was a Mormon curriculum. So, from what I understand, the creator of the curriculum, Jenny Phillips, is of the Mormon faith. From what I understand that to be. However, inside of the curriculum, it will tell you that it was built free of a denomination and specific doctrine beliefs. So it's supposed to be a, um, here, let me get it. Okay, 
So this is one of their frequently asked questions, which I um, I would strongly suggest that you go through because it will answer a lot of your questions. But um, does the curriculum include doctrines specific to any certain Christian denomination? And their answer is no. The goal of the Good and the Beautiful curriculum is not to teach doctrines specific to a particular Christian sect, but to teach general principles of moral character um, such as honesty and kindness, the King James Version of the Bible is used when quoting Bible verses. Um, I have found that to be spot on. Um, I haven't had any issue with anything that we've come across um, so far, but across, across <laughs> so far. But like I said, I do believe that the actual creator is of Mormon faith, and I think that there is an addition um, to the curriculum that you can add on if you are of the Mormon faith as well. But as far as it being a Mormon curriculum, God, I have found it to be very general. Um, I have found it as just that, teaching very general principles of moral character, honesty, and kindness. I've had no problem with it at all. So, okay. The next thing is, I get quite a few questions um, just asking my opinion about it from secular homeschoolers. And my very quick answer, kind of quick answer to this is going to be that I cannot give you advice in that area because I'm not a secular homeschooler. So the best thing for you to be able to do would be to... Um, gather thoughts from someone that is a secular homeschooler and it just so happens that I have a friend here on YouTube her name is Tanya from Project Happy Home and she has an incredible inc incredible video okay you guys on um, how she uses one level of the good and the beautiful in her secular homeschool I watched it all, even though I'm not a secular homeschooler, but like I have said before, I really enjoy hearing different perspectives um, and hearing about different families and the way they do things, families that are not like mine. I just feel like it helps you to um, gain a better, um, I don't know, it, it helps you to have more um, apathy or empathy. Is it empathy? <laughs> Towards other people and what they believe. Um, and it helps you not to be afraid of things, you know? It helps you not to be afraid. So I really enjoy watching videos that are like that. And I really enjoyed watching her video. And she went through it, um, each part of the curriculum that she is currently using. And she tells you how she's able to remove certain things and how certain things don't bother her. But if they do bother you, then you would be able to make a better decision based on what she is showing you. So I would highly, highly recommend you go and watch that video. Um, I do have quite a bit. I have quite a bit of other homeschool mom friends that are secular that have found that they can use it but like I said you can't really take advice from me because that is not the um, perspective that I am coming from so it would be your best bet to go and check out that video like I said I'm going to link it below or above here somewhere it's an incredible video and I love her anyways <laughs> make sure you go watch it if that is one of the questions that you have the next one, I get this quite a bit, and again, this is not really a question, but um, I heard it wasn't or it wasn't diverse or it lacked diversity. Okay, so um, I'm not the queen on all things diversity. I will say that I understand why people would um, would say that. Um, in general, representation is important. And when you open a book and you see yourself or you see all different types of people, um, there is something that it subconsciously does to you that is incredible. Um, so as a brown girl or a black girl, um, opening a book and seeing myself, a little brown girl or a brown mom, um, it makes a difference. I get it. Um, as far as 
diversity in story and all that other stuff. I mean, the thing is, what I'm trying to say is, I understand when people say that, and I would not say that I found the curriculum to be the most diverse ever. Um, however, I am. I did not go into it looking for an all-encompassing curriculum, so that's not something that bothered me at all. We incorporate diversity into all of our lives, and I don't look for one specific curriculum to do that for me. It was not an issue that I had. Would I have liked to have seen more stories about brown families or Asian families or whatever else? Yeah, you know? like. <laughs> Yes, I would. However, I don't think it's a con necessarily for us at all. So if it's something you're definitely looking for and you're definitely looking for that diversity in story and the different families and things like that, then, you know, maybe this isn't for you. It wasn't a big deal for me. Um, like I said, it's just a nice little base and structure for us and I've had no problem with it. Um, whatsoever. Could they throw a few extra brown or Asian or whomever families in there? Sure they could inside of the um, read alouds I would say in particular. Maybe I, just, I saw one or two families that I think were brown. <laughs> but you know that's not our sole pieces of literature and you know we get it in all the time so it's just not a big deal for me. And you have again, you have to make the decision that is best for you and what you are actually looking for. The next question I have is, how do you use it? Okay, so when people normally ask this, they mean um, uh, as far as the PDF and print or the physical version, electronic. We do all of them. We use the printed version. I print out uh, pieces, bits and pieces from the PDF versions that I have of some parts of the curriculum. And then we heavily use it electronically through our iPad. And I will have a separate video on how we use it, even though I have one already that kind of explains um, how we fill out our worksheets, our worksheets and you know complete our curriculum pages in our iPad using um, some of our apps. But I'll do another one because I do understand that it's not, um, I guess it's not super popular. So um, maybe just having a more piece by piece or bit by bit breakdown of how we do it will, will be helpful. But we do a lot of it using our iPad in our Notability app. Next thing, how long do lessons take? Okay, so inside of the book, it will tell you about how long lessons take depending on um, what subject you're actually using in the curriculum. For us, it's a really difficult one to answer because we generally take a lot longer than what they um, project inside of the curriculum. And that is because we unpack everything. So we take a basic lesson that maybe should take 20 minutes and we might spend two days on it. Um, we might spend three days on it. I unpack everything. So lessons will take me quite a bit of time to get through because I just feel like there is no need to rush. So that's going to be my short and sweet answer for that. But in general, inside of the curriculum, it will tell you about how long um, each lesson should take depending on what part of the curriculum you're actually using. And I've also gotten this because I talk about um, how we use the curriculum a bit differently. People have asked me, how do I assess the children um, if I'm not completing the curriculum from cover to cover? And the way that I assess my children in anything, basically, is progress, not completion. So um, I take really good records. Um, I have a homeschool journal. Uh, I take notes of the concepts they are grasping and the concepts they need work on. And we just make sure that we are progressing, not completing things. And hopefully I can show more of that in future videos but that's the best way that I can kind of explain it we are not big on testing 
um, and scores. They just hinder us at this point in our homeschool. I'm sure that they will um, ease their way in a lot more as we move up in our grade levels. But for right now, we don't even we don't even bother with grades. <laughs> so yeah, I think that was overall the things that popped up the most. Thank you guys so much for listening to me chit chat. This is the first of my Good and the Beautiful series and it was just my quick Q&A or not so quick Q&A um, but next up I think we're going to talk about the handwriting, um, the language arts, the science, the history, um, the creative companion and the nature notebook and geography. I also separated geography even though it is not separate um, as a separate unit on the site. Like I said, I pull out pieces and join them together and that really helps me to fit them into the way that we handle our schedule in homeschool. So that is going to be another section and then I think that would be it. I think that's about six videos, you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoy the series and I will see you in the next video.